sister how you the presence of God. Pastor Michael Hayes back with you this lovely, rainy, dreary <laughs> Sunday morning here in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's raining. Well, it's been raining all morning. Uh, so we're getting pretty much uh, incredibly uh, copious February showers. Uh, I don't know if it's going to bring May flowers, <laughs> but but nonetheless, uh, we are happy to have rain as opposed to the white stuff. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Ooh, I could, hey, listen, if I don't see another, another snow for the rest of my life, it'll be too soon. <laughs> so anyway, God is good. I'm so glad to have you with us today. How are you this morning? I pray that you're doing well things are going good in your life. Glad to have you with us. Sister, it's good to see you. I haven't heard from you or seen you in a while. It's so good to see you. I hope that and pray. I know that you guys got bombarded uh, there in Tennessee with uh, a lot of snow and uh, a lot of ice and uh, the cold temperatures, but I hear it's warming up down there like it is here. Uh, it's in the 40s here. Uh, look like it's going to be I don't know, might even get up to 70 today. You never know. You never know. So uh, we're happy about that. Uh, but I hope that uh, you are blessed where you are. We're going to look briefly at this text this morning. It's found in the book of Psalm, division four and verse number eight. Psalm, looking in the book of Psalm, Division four, and we, if I can get it myself here, here we go. Okay. Psalm division four, and we are looking at <clears throat> verse number eight. Okay. Do you have it? I pray you have it. We're looking at this uh, from, I think this is God's Word version of the Bible. I'm not sure. But anyway. Psalm division four, verse eight says, I will lie down both in peace and in sleep for you alone, Jehovah, make me dwell in safety. I will lie down both in peace and sleep for you alone, Jehovah, make me dwell in safety. Today, we're talking about peaceful sleep, peaceful sleep. Let's bow our heads briefly for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your love and kindness and your blessings with, to us and towards us and for us are just magnanimous and wonderful. And we thank you. Lord, we pray that today you would lead and guide us into the study of your word. Give us understanding beyond our years and help us, Lord, to be able to focus more on you and less on ourselves. Bless us this day and give us this day our daily bread in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Peaceful sleep. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Do you get good sleep at night? Are you able to peacefully get some rest at night when you lie you down to sleep? Do you pray your Lord, your soul to keep? <laughs> I hope you do. I hope you're able to get good sleep. But you know, there's reasons why oftentimes we don't get good sleep. Now, sometimes there are health challenges, you know, things like sleep apnea and things of that nature. But there are other, other challenges that we face as human beings that are mental in nature. Um, sometimes it's difficult to lay down to sleep when things aren't necessarily going the way they should go 
in terms of our mental state, or maybe I should say our emotional state. You know, David was an emotional person and he didn't mind sharing his emotional states <laughs> by way of writing. And I think that's a good thing. I think that there are times when you need to express what's going on inside of you, either through the pen or through the tongue by talking to somebody about what's going on with you. I think that's one way that will allow you to have some peace of mind in terms of what might be going on in your life. I think it's very important to find somebody that you can talk with without fear of judgment or ridicule or anything like that, but a good friend that you can open up with and talk to. But in our Psalm today, <clears throat> which is Psalm division four, David is dealing with uh, a, a very interesting situation that I think many of us face sometimes in our daily lives, sometimes every once in a while, but nonetheless, all of us have faced this. And that is people who lie on you. <laughs> or people who misinterpret you, or people who believe lies about you, people who believe things about you that aren't true. And for the believer, for someone who is uh, believing in Christ, someone who's seeking to live a life worthy of the calling of God in their life, it is very difficult to go to sleep knowing that there are people out there that believe things about you that aren't true. Am I right or am I wrong about it? For those of us who are trying to live lives worthy of God and seeking to live righteous lives, lives that are filled with the grace of God and the mercies of God, and just seeking to treat everybody right, seeking to do everybody right, when lies come in about you and about your reputation, it starts tearing down your reputation and people start saying things about you that they shouldn't say, that are completely false. That has a tendency to work on your mind. Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. And at times it can keep you from getting sleep. Huh? You can stay up all night racking your brain about why these people believe these lies about me. I don't understand it. Or why people keep misinterpreting me. You know, I, I have that problem every once in a while because I'm a big guy and I have a tendency to be loud and, you know, my voice is louder than, than, than I anticipate it many times. And sometimes people think I'm angry when I'm not. And I'm just like, why are you don't, you know, I'm, I'm not angry. I'm not mad. I'm just, you know, I'm just expressing myself. But people will see it as anger. You know, this is an angry black man, you know, or whatever the case may be. And it's not really that. I'm just excited about something or I just I'm excited about expressing what I'm feeling or what I'm what's going on with me. And it's misinterpreted. And that wears on me as a pastor, as a preacher, because it has a tendency to downgrade your reputation among people. And sometimes it's hard for me to go to sleep when I'm thinking that people see me in a different light than the light that I believe I should, you know, the light that I believe uh, I should be seen in, if you will. So what do you do about that? Well, there's not a whole lot you can do about it per se, other than allowing people to know who you are, expressing who you are, showing who you are in your daily walk with them. But here's what David talks about here in Psalm 4. Notice what he says here in Psalm 4 and verse number 1. He says, a Psalm of David, answer me when I call, O God, O God of my righteousness. You see that? Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness, for you have freed me from my troubles. You have pity on me and you hear my prayer. And this is what gives, watch this, this is what gives David the peace to be able to sleep and lie down at night. What are you saying, pastor? 
Well, it's what David is saying here. David is saying, God, you know the real me. <clears throat> you know, what's important to, to have in your life is somebody who really knows the real you, <laughs> who knows the inner you, who knows the, the things that drive you, the things that motivate you, who truly understand. They're not misunderstanding or misinterpreting signals from you. They're not reading and, under, and, and believing lies about you. No, they know the real you. And when you have someone in your life that you can have a relationship with who knows the real you, mm, that can give you a peace and a calmness that allows you to sleep at night. And David is saying that that person is not a human being, but it is God himself. God, you know me. You are my righteousness. You are the God of my righteousness. You have freed me from my troubles. You have pity on me, amen, and you hear my prayer. God, you know what I'm trying to do. When people misinterpret your actions, here you are trying to do something good for people and people misinterpret it and turn it into something evil and ugly. Have you ever had that happen to you? You trying to do something right. You trying to help somebody. You trying to treat some you know, people good and they misinterpret it and turn it around and turn it into something ugly and evil and wicked. Have you ever had that happen to you? And you call out to God, you say, God, you know the real me. Now, you know what I was intending to do. You know what my intentions were, what my motivations were. You understand the inner thoughts of my mind, my heart, and my spirit. You understand, Lord. And so, God, I'm going to rest tonight sound asleep because I know that you know the real me. You are the God of my righteousness, and you are a God who hears my prayer. Somebody says amen. Somebody say amen to that. And here's what David says to those who would dare question, amen, his motives of doing what's right and who would call out all lies and deception about his reputation. Here's what he says to them in verse three of Psalm Division Four. He says, you need to know that the Lord singles out godly people for himself, and the Lord hears me when I call. Mm. <laughs> Woo! I love that. You know what David is saying right there? David is saying, you need to understand, while you're over here talking about me behind my back, while you're over here mistreating me, or while you're over here misinterpreting my actions and all of this kind of stuff, you need to know who you're dealing with. You're dealing with a son of God. You're dealing with a son of the king. Somebody say amen. You're dealing with somebody that when they call out to God, God hears his prayer. Somebody say amen. God singles out those, amen, who are godly people who seek after God's will in their life. And I am definitely one of those people. And I want you all to understand and know that while you're talking about me, while you back backbiting me and mistreating me and saying the things that you're saying about me that are not true, that are completely 1,000% false, I want you to understand who you're doing that against. You're doing the, that against the apple of God's eye. You're doing that against God who listens and hears my prayer. And David was confident in that kind of relationship with God. See, this is really what it's all about, saints. When you have a relationship with God, a vibrant, uh, 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 you know, dynamic, growing, maturing, incredibly open and transparent relationship with God, it does not matter what people say, what people do, or what people think, because God knows the real you, and he amen, is your righteousness. What does that mean? It means that he is the one that's going to make the proper exact judgment as it should be made at the end of all things. God is the one who's going to make the true righteous decision about my life and my personhood and about who I really am, what my true character is. 
God is the one that's going to have the final say on that. While everybody else is slandering my name out here and mistreating me and talking about me and telling me I ain't this and that and the other thing. While everybody's doing that, God is the one who has the final say. And you know what I'm going to do tonight? Here's what I'm going to do tonight. <laughs> the psalmist said, David says in verse eight, he says, I'm going to fall asleep in peace. I'm going to lie down alone on my bed and I'm going to be snoring some Z's tonight because I'm not going to spend any time concerned and worried about what other people think about me because I know that God knows me. And if God sees any wrong way in me, he will show it to me. He will reveal it in my life. If God sees anything in my life that is out of alignment with him, he will give it to me. He will show it to me and he will call me to a change of character in him. But I'm, but tonight, I want you to know, <laughs> I'm copping some Z's tonight. <laughs> I'm going to be counting some sheep tonight. Come on, say amen. I'm not spending one hour, one minute of one day worried about the fact that you don't understand me, that you have a problem with me or whatever. The case. I'm not spending any more time on that. No, no, no. Because I'm justified by the righteousness of God in my life. The right judgment of God in my life. Can you say amen today? I pray. I pray that you will trust that God knows the real you today, that he truly understands your life and your heart and the motivations behind all that you say and all that you do, and that you, in putting your trust in the fact that he will make the proper choice and decision at the end of time, you will rest tonight sound asleep, knowing that God's got your back. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your love and kindness towards us. Lord, we praise you and we appreciate so much the fact that you truly know the real us. You understand us, Lord, from the inside out. You know where we came from, Lord. You know what parentage we had. You know how we were tutored and how we were trained as we were growing up as adolescents. You know, Lord, all the challenges we've had fighting demons and devils and sin in our life and all of these things. And then, Lord, you understand how we gave it all up and let you take all our burdens away. And now, Lord, you know the real us. You know that we seek to do your will. And even though, Lord, might we might make mistakes, even though, Lord, we might do some mishaps, even though, Lord, we might be misunderstood, we know that you truly understand us. Thank you, God, for your grace. Lord, help us to rest in your view of us, in your perception of us, in your decision over us, for your banner over us is love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, God be with you. God bless you. I pray this has been a blessing to you. If it has, please like it and share it on your Facebook page. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our Facebook channel or our Facebook group. Just type inside the search engine inside of your Facebook app, hashtag PTPOG. That stands for Practicing the Presence of God. It will pull up a purple icon, much like the one you see behind me. Click on it and then join our ministry family. Also, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Leave a comment down below. And if you're watching this on Facebook as well, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you whether or not you've been blessed. And if you would, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, like it and click the bell, the notification bell, so you'll know when we do new videos. And also, please subscribe to this channel we need as many new subscribers as we can get. We really appreciate you, amen, stopping by and being with us today. Have a good day, an awesome day in the Lord. 
and may the Lord wash between you and me while we are briefly separated one from the other. Amen. God be with you. Take care, guys. We'll see you on tomorrow.